God bless you guys today. Um, I'm really, really excited because this is part one of four parts in a series that I'm doing called Love is Patient, where we're going to be talking about the different kinds of love that is described in scripture. Um, there's love eros, there's love agape, love philia, and love storge. I think I got the name finally right. Um, but today's um, focus is going to be on love eros. Now, love eros, um, and I'm going to be going back and forth because I, I know that um, I think it's just best that there's some people who know a, a lot of theological terms and there's some people who, you know, they don't grab an interest to it, which is totally fine. And I don't want to, I don't want this to be a conversation where it's like a theological endeavor. Um, I want to be able to talk about these things in a way that makes sense to everyone. Um, because what's the point of just showing off what you know, but you're not connecting it to other people. So, um, for the theologians out there that are hearing me use these terminologies and they're just waiting for me to like get all theological, I'm sorry to disappoint you guys, but that's just not how I roll. I like to just explain things in a very simplistic way or else what's the point? Um, so anyways, with that said, love arrows, um, there's a great article that I found online um, by Zach Zavada. He um, updated an article March 6th of this year where he talks about love eros. And he says here, eros is pronounced eros, um, which is a love that is physical and essential intimacy between a, a husband and a wife. It's, it expresses sexual romantic attraction. Eros is also the name of a mythological Greek love of God. Wait, the Greek god of love, sorry. Sexual desire, physical attraction, and a physical love. Love has many meanings in English, but in the ancient Greeks, it had four, there was four words to describe the different forms of love precisely. Although eros does not appear in the New Testament, which is true, this Greek term for erotic love is portrayed in the Old Testament book, Song of Solomon, which is true. If you read Song of Solomon, um, Song of Solomon, he gets really in deep in, he is really profound for his love, not just, um, you know, the spiritual, note, but he gets into this really deep erotic sense of love um, for the, the bride. If you read Song of Solomon, it's actually one of my favorite books in the Bible um, because he just describes it in such a beautiful way. So if you ever get the chance to read Song of Psalms, read it because he, he brings out such a beautiful um, depiction of what um, Eros love looks like. And he does it in such a poetic and beautiful way. Um now, if we look at arrows in scripture, there's a ton of other scriptures that you can read in the Old Testament, even though the word is not used. But the idea of erotic love and, and intimacy between husband and wife, like I have here written down in my notes in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 8 and 9, where Paul talks about um, it's good, it is good for them to stay unmarried as I do. If they cannot control themselves, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. That burning with passion is a sense of erotic love. And there's just so many other scriptures, Hebrews 13, verse 4. You, we could just go down the list of um, how also in the New Testament, the description of Eros love is very prevalent in those scriptures. Jennifer, why are you bringing this up? What does this matter? How can I apply it to my life now? Very simple. Um, Eros love is one of the loves that I feel personally is not described or taught in the church. And I feel like, especially when it comes to youth, it is very important to teach, especially youth, um, that are going through puberty and going through all these mo motions. It's so important to teach Eros love and what that is and what that entails. Um, and not just go straight forward with the, you know, you can't have sex outside of marriage because fornication is a sin and blah, 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 blah. Even though that is true, scripture does confirm that, you know, it's it's true. But what is the point of telling, especially a youth or somebody who struggles with promiscuity, um, what is the point of telling somebody, don't do this, don't do that because you're going to go to hell and not explain the flip side of that, that... You know, Eros love is something that is beautiful and is actually God made. You know, when it is practiced within the scope of marriage, when you have that sense of erotic love for your husband or for your wife and you're just there and you're having a passionate embrace, a physical passionate embrace with your husband and wife, it's a beautiful thing to, to have and, and there's no sin in that. But when you're constantly teaching youth that sex is a sin, sex is a sin, by the time they get into marriage and they can actually practice, you know, that Eros love, that physical love, that mm, love, you know, they don't know what to do because all their life they've been taught, you know, that passion is a sin. Why should I feel it? You know what I mean? 
So I always feel that it's so important to not be afraid to talk about sex in church. Don't be afraid to talk about the physical love in church. Um, it's so important because then I feel that if that word sex wasn't so taboo in the churches nowadays, we wouldn't have so many young kids getting pregnant. We wouldn't have so many divorces out there. We wouldn't have so many musicians having sex with God knows how many people or how many singers, worshipers falling in, you know, into that kind of pattern. You know what I mean? Or we wouldn't have so many... Um, you know, we wouldn't have all this nonsense that's going on in the church. We wouldn't have so much sexual abuse or rape or th things that happen. You know, I feel personally that all these things wouldn't be so much if we would just talk about that word sex and be okay with teaching children about those things. Teaching, when I say children, I mean like preteen, puberty age, that's what I mean. Um, just teaching them about the importance of what that means, what that signifies, that when you're younger, you're going to feel emotions um, cognitively, socially, um, spiritually, physically, you're going to start feeling things. What does that mean? What does that look like? Um, and then that could open a platform to teach, for example, women how to respect themselves, how to respect their body, that they, that your body is special, honey, that you just don't give your cookie to just anybody, honey, that arrows love, you could feel the passion. You can feel all that. Yes, it's true. It's not a bad thing. You know, that's something that, that was made so that when you get married, you can use that passion to connect more with your partner, which is not bad. However, you know, sin is out there. The devil is always going to try to twist things um, that's meant to give glory to God and to unite something that's meant to be beautiful. You know, the enemy is always going to try to twist it for something negative. And it'll be a great opportunity to teach youth about that, like especially for, for men, teaching men how to value themselves as men and, and, and women how to value themselves as, as, as women. It'll be a great opportunity to teach these things. Um, and just kind of sidestepping for a bit, um, I love philosophy. Um, I studied philosophy with the great help of a friend of mine, Joseph Terry. He, he's actually one of the pastors in New Life Church in Queens. For those of you who are looking for a church in Queens, you can look up New Life. It's right near Queens Boulevard, um, and he does Bible studies and things like that. And he actually introduced me to a philosopher, Christian philosopher called Kierkegaard. And um, he's really into existential philosophy and things like that. Um, and one of the things he actually talks about is the three stages of, of life. And um, a brief synopsis of it is just, it's, just, it's like the... It's kind of like um, describing a movement between from self, from one level of existence to another through the act of will and an act of choice. That's basically like in a, I guess the most simplest way I could say it. But the reason why I say it is because in one of the stages he talks about the aesthetic change where a person behaves according to their impulses, according to their emotions, they're governed by their senses. Um, um, and that a person lives, um, it's, I'm reading my, my notes all the way from college when, when he, he would teach me this, it's crazy. Um, that, through the, um, that though the person lives out this sort of existence, he knows that his life consists or ought to exist more than simply just through your emotions and simply through just your feelings. So through in that point, you begin to realize that, okay, I'm not just about the aesthetic. I'm not just about that, that feeling of passion and all this. And no, I, this is not going to fulfill me. To be my authentic self i need more than just a passion um which is deep because imagine teaching youth this concept imagine teaching a young lady who's in a relationship with a man and and teaching her you know honey you're more than just your senses you're more than just your emotions you know yes you can have arrows love and yes it's good that you feel that for that person but you're more than just that you know that's not who you really are that's not that doesn't define your authentic self that just because a man, you go out and you sleep with all these other women, and yes, you know, you guys can be like, yeah, you know, I got this one, da da da, da but that's not your identity. That's not who you are. That's just a surface level. That's just a physical thing. That's just an aesthetic thing. You're more than, than, than Eros love. You know what I mean? So it's so important to, I feel with this topic, I only bring it up just for the point of hopefully encouraging other people and and other churches to just talk more about this subject about um sex i know it's really taboo god knows what comments and stuff i'm gonna get after posting this video um but i feel like it's so important to talk about it don't be afraid to talk about topics that are uncomfortable because it's needed and it's essential and you never know this kind of topic can motivate women to value themselves can motivate men to respect themselves as men um and it could also motivate the youth to move from an aesthetic love 
to more going up to agape i'm um, going up to philia going up to you know just valuing themselves as people and not just using their physical emotion to identify themselves but to find their rooted identity in god and not just in the physical um but they can't do that without us it's our job as leaders um to help instruct the youth in this area and not just leave them there to dry you know what i mean to really teach them through our experience through scripture through so many other things teach them about this topic in a way that makes sense in a way that is inviting that's not judgmental that doesn't make them feel that they're less than because i guarantee you that once we start talking about these topics and in, in that kind of a setting not only will we be able to break generational curses and and really bad habits in the church we'll be able to pr promote a pure sense of authenticity where it's rooted not just in, in the physical love but in something much more deeper than the physical um and for those of you guys and those of you youth who are watching this video and who even feel that way who feel that you know people's been judging me because i've done this because i've done that you know always know that god knows your heart god knows your heart and you're not the only one in church who's committed those kinds of mistakes hello i'm just bringing it out there and as long as we open our heart and our minds and our souls and our spirit for the Holy Spirit to work in us day by day, we can't go wrong in that posture. So don't let whatever struggles you have, and for this topic, it could be sex. And this topic, it could be you're with a girlfriend and you can't help, you know, having sex with her or vice versa. You know, or maybe you, you struggle with same with having um, relations with the same gender, um, homosexuality and and transgendered you know don't be afraid to bring this to the feet of god and talk to god about these things um we shouldn't be afraid to talk about these topics we shouldn't be afraid to to devil into them to get into these things and to ask god for wisdom um and i guarantee you that once we ask god for wisdom and guidance in these areas it will bring more of a unity instead of a separation and a judgment and all this other nonsense it'll bring more unity within the church so I just encourage those who are maybe struggling in this area, listen, God's got you. Just keep on looking for God. Don't let that separate you from the Lord. Allow God to continue to work with you in this area. And I just pray that God connects you with people who would support you and not be afraid to talk about this topic. So um, I just pray that this Motivation Monday um, inspires you guys to watch next week's video <laughs> where we're going to just quickly um, talk about Amorphilia. Um, even though I know that these short videos no way near gets in depth to the significance of, of the loves, but I just hope that these topics could get you curious about looking this up a bit more. Um, so God bless you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, JM Ministries, and click the notification bell. That way you can stay up to date to our videos and stuff that are coming up and, um, have a blessed week. God bless you guys.